I started sculpting four years ago and working in the uh, atelier of Aris Demetrius. And uh, Aris was an old friend and uh, was encouraging me to pick up the craft because he knew how much I love sculpture. So we worked with Aris for a short period of time and then went off to Italy and did a tutorial at the Florence Academy of Art with uh, Rob Bodum. And uh, the combination of the two significantly influenced my work, which uh, I think uh, borrows from Giacometti, a little bit from Rodin, and, uh, and the end product is Robert Emmons. And uh, it's been a great adventure, and I've certainly enjoyed uh, the opportunity to uh, delve into sculpture in a much larger way than I ever imagined I would. And uh, after the show last year uh, with Aris Demetrius, uh, it worked very well, and I was pleased, and the gallery was pleased, and so they invited me back to do a solo show, and uh, that's what this show is all about. This was a nude that I did in uh, Florence, Italy, uh, when I was working with uh, Rob Bodum, who is the head of the sculpture department at the Florence Academy. And uh, I was there for three months, and uh, during that course of the period of time, I, uh, I had an opportunity to work with a, a model and produced uh, two uh, works. And uh, it was a great experience. And, uh, you know, getting up every day and traveling to the sculpture studio and spending five hours at the sculpture studio working and having a late lunch and going home and, and uh, enjoying the rest of Florence. Uh, it was a fabulous experience, and uh, I learned much, and, uh, and hopefully I've retained what I've learned. People were kind of carried away with the fact that, uh, one, I would go and live in a foreign country, uh, but I thought that was fantastic. Uh, a lot of things may not work the way a Westerner would expect, but just the culture of Florence and being a part of that as a sculptor uh, was an incredible experience and one that I shall always treasure. I wrote a book uh, and it was called 6,000 Sunrises and the book was all about being willing to take risk as you mature and grow older and so many people start to shut down and their life becomes smaller as they age and it doesn't have to be that way because we've been given uh, this remarkable additional uh, two decades uh, of life expectancy more than our parents might have had. And uh, with that life expectancy comes opportunities to do new and different things, explore places that you've only dreamed of in the past, and uh, to make that life that you're now enjoying uh, much more exciting and stimulating and valuable uh, experience. Bronze is a, a primeval, uh, if you will. It goes way back to uh, when cavemen first were combining metals and so forth and coming up with this uh, new hard yet brilliant metal called bronze. And uh, uh, when you look at the history of it and then, you know, and look then at uh, all of the marvelous sculptures that have been done uh, working with this material. And you know, typically you'll work in clay, and then it goes through a process of uh, uh, you go to the foundry, and the foundry then uh, prepares the, the bronze uh, that uh, is then uh, the basis upon which you move forward. And uh, I love the look of bronze. I love what you can do with it. Uh, I love how you can change patinas. Uh, when you look through this exhibition, you'll see that uh, these two nude figures which we have in the exhibition. Uh, one is a very light patina and the other is a dark patina. In the process of looking at the two, they almost appear to be different sculptures. I had pretty much completed the piece and uh, my tutor came in one day and, and looked at what I had done and took a palette knife and scraped off the face and said I could do much better than that. And. Uh, that you know, you you have to leave your ego at the door uh, when you're participating in that kind of a tutorial, 
And so I took it for just what he said. I could do much better than that. And so I worked hard and I produced this face, which was a significant improvement in what I had done originally. But, you know, that's, there's a little bit of trial and error involved with the process of sculpting. Uh, there's another piece which is called Homage to Marini. And uh, I had done a horse before, but after visiting the Marini Museum in Florence, I was really taken aback by what he had accomplished with some of his horses and how dynamic they were. And mine was static and his horses were dynamic. And so I came back, put my horse aside and did a new horse, which uh, captured some of the same uh, dynamics that Rainer Marini uh, actually uh, achieved. And then I titled the piece Homage to Marini. When you're sculpting, you will do some works that you're very proud of, but you'll do some works that uh, you are a little bit disappointed with. And the challenge is to take those works that are, are less of what you would like them to be and put them aside and try to really develop the works that uh, uh, are significant and that you're pr particularly proud of and taking them to another level. As my friend Dan Graves once said to me, everyone has hit singles and doubles and some will hit triples and occasionally a home run. And he did the same thing with art. There's, there's an element of that which I think is, uh, is, is very important. You, if you want to do something in art, you try it. If it's not successful, you try again. I love the horizontal kind of feel that this has. It's ready to spring. Yeah. Uh, lately I've been doing sculptures which are three-figure pieces and uh, I've done a number of uh, two-figure pieces. I, I'm having fun with those because I, I'm using them to tell stories. And I think that's always interesting when you look at a piece and there's a story behind it. Uh, I have a, in this show I have a, uh, a two-figure piece called Brief Encounter and it's uh, of a man and a woman uh, seeing each other uh, years past their romance and uh, he hurries past and she stops and, and wants to talk to him and wants to rekindle the relationship but he's not having any of it and so he rushes by. And, uh, it was a lot of fun doing that one. And people say, well, are you, is that something that happened to you? And my answer always is, I'll never tell. I think the, the, the issue that was in my book, and it's really uh, been an element of my life, and that's uh, one, having curiosity, uh, wondering what it would be like to do, to be, to go. And I've always had a strong sense of uh, the curious. I wonder, I wonder what it's going to look like. I wonder what experience it will be. My wife, Maria, and I were initially introduced to Robert's sculpture at a party at his home. And we saw Florence, the nude. And I was immediately attracted to the quality of the work. And I asked Bob um, who the artist was. And he sort of turned red a little bit and said, well, that's, that's my work. And from there, the rest is kind of history. The quality of the casting, sort of the adventurous take on uh, the inspiration for the work and his willingness to try new techniques and new styles is what has kept kind of a lively pace of his work coming through the gallery since we had the first exhibition last year. We uh, continue to look forward to working with him as he innovates and creates. He has a very adventurous spirit in that regard. And uh, the quality, you know, you cannot be surpassed. It's, it's up there with uh, Giacometti and Rodin and using the, the you know, the, the old school methods. Uh, it's very substantial work. Patinas are well done. And uh, we enjoy placing this work in our collectors' homes on a regular basis here at Merton's Fine Art.